Good morning, everyone. I want to talk to you today about the six steps that we're going to use to transmute our desire into the physical equivalent. Now, these are found on 36 of your book, if you have this book. But you can also find it in any, in any Think and Grow Rich book. They're all there. And usually about three to four pages into the chapter on desire. So let's jump right into this. Step one, be definite about the amount that you want. Why is this important? I mean, this exact amount? Because these six steps are not suggestions. There's a lot of how-to in these, but applying the Carnegie secret is so important. In this chap when we get to the chapter on faith, we're going to talk more about this and how it builds our confidence. But, you know, these are core to the fundamental and the secret of this book. You need this definite of purpose so that you can turn your idea over to your infinite intelligence, into your subconscious mind, and then move from your subconscious mind into physical form. Our subconscious mind is very literal. Literal, I'm sorry. If you were to say your goal is to have more money and you know you go outside and you find a dollar or five dollars on the side, well, hey, you know, you're done. Call it quits. But I don't think that's what you really meant when you said I don't want more money. So the clearer you are, the less doubt you have and less confusion you have. You see, what happens is whenever we are confused about where we're going, fear sets in. And then we allow ourselves to, to not think as logically as we should. We begin to use our imagination in the wrong way instead of the correct way, and we start imagining these really bad scenarios about where things are going. You know, psychological reason, you know, the, the subconscious mind is, is literal. It's worse than very specific. So be very specific about what you want. So, step two. Determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. You know, and everybody's like, well, I want to I want to get, I want to get. You know, we always think about, I want when we start something, I want to get this. We don't always think about what am I going to give. And so, we got to understand this law of reciprocity. Okay. This how do we get through giving. If you think about it, cause and effect, everything has an equal and opposite reaction. We, we have to give as well as get. You don't get something for nothing. So, let go of the things of lesser value, Right? and look at those things of greater value. You know, make these trades. You know, maybe you're going to give up TV to work out, you know. How about you're going to give up kale for pizza? Not a good trade, but it may be one you need to make. I don't know. <laughs> and, but the law of sacrifice is, is about defining our lesser values and working toward those things that are higher value. <laughs> Once you begin to define something that is higher value, you never have to worry about letting go of the things of lesser value because they just fall away. They're not there. They're not in harmony with your life. So what is it you're willing to give up in order to go up? Align yourself with this law of sacrifice. Move to that place of higher value on what you want. A lot of times what happens is there's five mistakes that people have a tendency to make whenever it comes to goal setting. And I suggest that if you failed at achieving a goal, that you've probably made one of these five mistakes. I know I have. So number one, maybe you've set goals that you know you can achieve. It's like, you know, I know I can do this. And I, whenever I started my business, it's like, well, I don't know how to sail. I don't know how to do these things. And I, you know, but as I look back, as I continue, I realize that I can learn. So set a goal on what you, we set goals on what we feel comfortable with, and that causes us to fail. The second thing is devise a plan that's based on the conditions and circumstances as they are right now, and that causes us to fail. When we look at conditions, oh, the economy's this, the government's like this, and we, and we listen to all these things, the, the employees we have, I mean, all these things cause us not to move forward. The plan can change. So don't ever change your goal because a lot of times that's what happens. Plans change, and instead of, instead of working with your goal, we change the plan. So don't allow your plan to change. Number three, we only set goals that we know how to do. And we get attached to getting it right. Oh, we love to get things right, no doubt about it. But you know, if we don't know how to do something, a lot of times we may not try. We may not put our whole effort into it. You know, this is what you've got to do. You've got to suspend the required of knowing how to do something. The fourth thing that causes us to make sake, we begin to question our worthiness. Oh, I'm not worthy of that. And people will help you all of it. You know, not only do you not feel worthy, it's like somebody's going to help you with it. And this is the things that we hear. You know. Who do you think you are? What do you think you will do that with that? I'm sorry, how do you think you'll do that? Where are you going to get the money? 
Money doesn't grow on trees. Better safe than sorry. Good things come to those who wait. You know, we're programmed. Bah, you know, we just kind of follow the crowd. And, and, we, and so we, it's no wonder we produce this mass average. So never question, am I worthy for growth? Question is, is the goal worthy of me? I'm trading my life for this, so I am worthy of this goal. The fifth mistake that people make. We think the purpose of a goal is to get something. That's what we were just talking about. We want to consider, what am I becoming? What do I intend to give? It helps us to remember the law of sacrifice. What am I going to give in order to get this back? So let's go to step three. Step three. Establish a definite date when you intend to possess the money you desire. This step forces us to consider, you know, the law of gender. We've talked about that a little bit. But, you know, corn grows 120 days. Plant it 120 days and, you know, got me some corn. And so, you know, there's always an incubation period in everything we do. Setting a date does two things. One, puts us in harmony with the law of gender. We know it's not going to happen overnight. We're going to start digging it up, see what's going on. Fortifies our faith. Second is, it creates a sense of urgency. You know, I've got a date. I know it's not going to, it's going to take some time. But it's not going to take forever. So I've got this block of time that, that I'm, and I work in. And the sense of urgency creates some speed. Now, we don't want to just do it because there, a lot of times we get too much of a sense of urgency. We make mistakes. But it's more about doing things that provide high value than it is about doing things really fast. So putting that date on it helps us to, to move forward. And it creates that urgency that we want. So don't get attached to how. Get attached to why. Why am I doing this? Step four. Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. This is so important. Again, we go back to the urgency. The universe likes speed. You know, the universe has got all kinds of stuff, I mean, going on. And so we got to figure out, how am I going to do this? What is it? This is the model for thinking. These six, six, these six steps force us to think in a certain way. Forces us to think according to the laws of cause and effect, vibration and gender. It also helps us to use our intellectual faculty better. When we write a definite plan, it forces us to use our creative imagination. How do we think into the future? Because at best, you know, we're guessing, I mean, a little bit. But it forces us to think a certain way. And it's about being able to think forward into the future that helps us understand our plan better. It, create, it reduces some of the confusion. But begin at once. Because there's two things that are going to happen if you begin at once. First, Creates the urgency, right? Forces us to do, th do things a certain way. The second, it conditions us to move when we're not ready. We'll never be ready. I talk to people all the time that want to do this, want to do that, and then they're, they're never ready. So this inspires us to get going, even though you aren't ready. And so we've got to condition our thinking to the fact that we will never be ready, and then move out anyway. Commit to use your imagination. Take action at once. You got to really get comfortable, right? Listen to this. You really got to get really comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you will do that, you can think and grow rich. But you got to do it afraid. I'm sorry, you do. Step five: write out a clear and concise statement of the amount of money you intend to acquire. Purpose of this step is to get us thinking in a certain way. Learn how to take an idea and move it into its physical equivalent. The first manifestation of your dream is you writing it out. So when you write it out, this you know this is this is where the idea comes from. The first manifestation manifestation of this idea, you know everything you see, you know you're sitting at a table, you know you got an ink pen, your this book, all of these things were created twice: once in the mind of someone, and the second time whenever it became the physical manifestation. So you when you write this out, you're giving birth to that desire. Desire is the effort of an unexpressed possibility within you seeking to be birthed. When you write the desire out, you give birth to this idea. Writing it is a first manifestation of making it real. So be sure and write it. And then step six, read your written statement twice daily. Twice daily. Once in the morning, once in the evening. You know, reputation is the mother of skill anytime we're introduced to an idea over and over and over again. What happens? It eventually becomes part of our subconscious mind. We call this, you know, an idea fixed in our, in our subconscious mind a habit. You know, we, we have some bad habits in there. I know I do. And habits, I mean, they're pretty hard to break. So if we start building these really good habits and we start doing them, 
it creates more purpose in our life. And so we'll start to do things a certain way. All the laws of the universe are brought into play in, in, the, in these steps. See, Carnegie commissioned Hill and told him to write this information and to make it so simple, so simple, that anyone could do it. All the laws of the universe are brought together. All you got to do is stop taking work and think and grow rich. And you may grow rich in, in money. You may grow rich in relationships. I don't know what you want to grow rich in. It doesn't have to be money. But the idea is to think and grow rich. I hope this helped you on the six steps.